Viewers of my stream know that I love creating fun special effects to spice things up a bit. Now, one of the fundamental building blocks of those effects is a high quality chroma key using a green screen. And I know that setting up a green screen and a chroma key can seem a little bit daunting. Not only do you need the screen, but do you need studio quality lighting and a really good camera? And what's up with all the dials that you have to adjust in OBS? Well, I'm here to tell you, it's actually not that complicated. With a typical streamer lighting setup, a decent webcam and a green screen, you too can have an amazing chroma key on which to build your effects. I'm Finite Singularity, and today I'm gonna show you how to set up a green screen that'll leave your viewers scratching their heads. But stick around to the end, because I'm gonna share with you a cheat code that'll make it even easier. Now let's start by talking about the screen itself. You can see my green screen behind me, which is a pull-down green screen mounted to my ceiling. Now, as streamers, we typically like to do things as inexpensively as possible. And a lot of tutorials will claim a good way to cut corners is on the green screen itself. They'll say things like, just get yourself some green cloth and throw it up on the wall behind you. And while this can work, it causes two big problems. The first is set up and tear down. You have to figure out a way to mount it to the wall. And when you mount it, you have to figure out how to iron out all the wrinkles that will appear every single time you put it up. Speaking of those wrinkles, that's the second problem. I've never had much luck ironing out all those wrinkles. And a smooth green screen like this one is much easier to chroma key and you'll get significantly better results. So if you're serious about wanting to make these sorts of effects on your stream, I would recommend investing a little bit more in a quality green screen. Uh, something like a pull down green screen or maybe one of those Elgato pop-up green screens. They don't wrinkle, they have a nice quality green color and they set up and they tear down quite easily, and you'll find that you actually use them. A flat green screen is fantastic, but if you don't have any lights, you're gonna have a bad day trying to key it out. Now, if you've spent any time watching tutorials on green screens on YouTube, super boring, I know, you'll hear lighting, lighting, lighting. And then you'll see studio setups with expensive lights for the green screen and separate systems dedicated to the subject. And you'll see room size green screens that are far away. And I don't know about you, but I don't have the room nor the money in my streaming space for that. My screen placement, it breaks all the rules. It's way too close to me. I don't have dedicated lights. And I don't know if you noticed, but there's shadow. However, if we can keep those shadows diffuse and we can reasonably limit them, we can easily make up for that in software. So how do I get lighting like this? Well, frankly, by following every lighting suggestion for streamers on the internet. To my left and up high, I have a bright LCD panel key light. And to my right, I have a dimmer LCD panel fill light. And that's it. I'll leave some links in the description for streaming lighting setup. And so if you can set up like a typical stream lighting setup like this, and you have a flat green screen, you'll get a great chroma key. The last piece of hardware we need to consider is the camera. Now, any decent webcam will work, although you might start to struggle with one of those cheap $5 webcams that you got for free at some conference. As lower end cameras, they tend to have lower color quality, less chroma information, and a lot more noise, which makes keying much more difficult. I've had good luck on a wide range of webcams and cameras, including the classic C920, the Elgato face cam, my iPhone. And I've also used this on like high-end mirrorless cameras. So it's really applicable to a wide range of cameras. And as long as you're not trying to use an actual potato 
this method should work well. And with that, let's dive into OBS and start the fun part, removing our background. Here we are in OBS. I've set up a simple scene of just my camera as well as a background image that we want to have show through our key. Go ahead and click on the camera and then on filters to bring up the filters menu for that source. This is where we'll apply our chroma key. Uh, click the plus button and select chroma key. Uh, once you click OK, you should see something similar to this. Uh, you'll have a chroma key using the default values and it likely won't look very good. This is because the green of your green screen likely does not match the default green provided by the filter. Uh, to fix this, we'll go ahead and select a custom color for our key color type. Uh, before we actually select a color though, I wanna talk briefly about these three sliders. Uh, these are the three important sliders for setting up our key and what we're going to go over today. Uh, the first is similarity. Similarity is the range of green that you'll be able to key out. Higher values mean you're going to key out more light and more dark, a larger range. Smaller values mean you're going to focus in on very specific colors of green. If you had an absolutely perfect chroma key, you could set this value way, way down. But again, as streamers, we don't have the space, so we cast shadows. We don't have professional lighting. We don't have dedicated lighting for our green screens. And so we are going to have variance in that color. And so we are going to need to have a similarity value that isn't one or two. That leads us to our smoothness value. One of the side effects of a chroma key is the edges of your subject can look rough or unnatural or noisy. Uh, the smoothness slider, well, it smooths those out and allows the subject to blend a little bit more nicely into the background and look more natural. Now, smoothness and similarity are linked. Uh, the general rule of thumb is the lower you can get your similarity value, the more range you have to play with your smoothness value. So if you can get that similarity value down low, it means you've got more ability to make your key look natural. Finally, we have key color spill reduction. One other thing that green screens do is they put a green cast on the subject. You'll notice this a lot of times in the shoulders, in the hair, you'll see like that green around someone when it's a pretty bad chroma key. Uh, spill reduction helps to fix this. It'll desaturate those greens around the edges. However, if you set it too high, it's gonna desaturate your skin tones and it's not gonna look real good. So I found for spill reduction, I keep it under 100. Usually I set it around 50. Uh, for my smoothness, I'm usually shooting for something around 15 to 25. And similarity, I find getting a key with a similarity under 80 can give a very nice key. Our first step now is we're gonna select our key color. So start by dialing these all down to one so that you can see your original background here and go ahead and click select color. Move your color picker here off to the side a little bit because you need to be able to see and click pick screen color. And this is somewhere where a lot of people mess up. Uh, when they go to pick a color, you're gonna just click on any green in your background here. You can see the value changing. A lot of people zero in on like this really nice chroma green here thinking, okay, I'm going to get that great chroma green and that's what we're going to filter out. Other people might pick stuff like really close to their subject to try to get rid of that, that haze around their subject. Other people might choose the darkest color. In fact, the best green to pick is as the kids say, the mid green. You're looking for that green that's smack dab in the middle so that when we expand that range, we're expanding from the middle to the outside versus having to expand from one side, you know, out. You, you wanna keep that value as low as possible. Uh, so we're gonna try to find sort of the middle shadow color here. I'm gonna pick something about here. So I'm gonna click there and then in my color picker here, click okay. You can kind of see some of the stuff that's getting filtered out because my similarity is low. Now the way we know we picked a good color 
will start to increase similarity. And the goal is to have the lightest part, which is above my head here, disappear at the same time as the darkest part, which is down here. So clearly I picked a color that is quite a bit too light. You can see my similarities around 70. Uh, so we're gonna rinse and repeat here. I'm gonna click select color. Uh, we'll move this off to the side again, pick screen color, and I'll pick a little bit darker green here. And we'll click OK. And again, we'll try that. And now you see it's not perfect, but we're a lot closer and our similarity value is down around 50, 52. We'll, we'll set it to about 55 here. Gives us a little bit extra room to work with. And if I move this out of the way, you can see we have a pretty good key without even doing any smoothness here. That picking that middle color makes a huge, huge difference. I'm gonna go ahead with my smoothness value. I'm gonna bump that up to around, I don't know, 14 or so. And uh, you know, you can see that it smooths out the edges just a little bit. If you do it too much, you'll find that you'll start to disappear. You'll start to turn into a ghost. Uh, so yeah, something around 14 seems to work pretty well there. And even though I don't have much green cast on me right now, I always set my spill reduction to 50. I find some shirts will show that cast a lot more. If I set it to 50, it gives me enough room to play with uh, so that I don't have to adjust my key every time I change clothes and fire up the stream on the next day. Uh, so with these settings, oh, we set ourselves, I guess I hit the opacity here somehow. Uh, with these settings, we have got a pretty good looking key here. Now, I mentioned at the beginning of this video that I was going to share with you a little cheat code. And here is what that cheat code is. We're going to go here and we're going to delete our chroma key. Uh, in the latest version of my Advanced Masks plugin, version 1.5.0, I've added a chroma key. Uh, we can find it by looking through alpha masks and the mask type will be chroma key. This algorithm is the same algorithm that the OBS team uses, but it's got a couple nice extras. Uh, the first of these, let's dial these all down so it's like we're starting from scratch again. Uh, the first of these is a double color select for our key color type. And what this lets us do, rather than having to try to pick out that middle green, we can pick the lightest green and the darkest green, which are much easier to see and identify. So let's go ahead here, move this, well, no, we'll use this window. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and click select color and pick screen color. And the lightest color is gonna be something right around here. So we'll select that green and click OK. Uh, we'll then click select color for the dark one and pick screen color. And I'm gonna go down here. This is by far the darkest green. Click OK, and now we can bring that similarity and you see they disappeared at the same time at an even lower value of 44 here. So it was able to pick that a little bit better than I could by eye. Our smoothness value would probably be the same as would our spill reduction. And here we have another really good looking key uh, picked out much easier because you're able to pick those two colors. The Advanced Mask Chroma Key also comes with a show matte option. Uh, this makes it easy to identify. You can see I've got some, some little noise going on in my shoulder here, which tells me that my smoothness might be a little high. So maybe we'll bring that down to eight. And you can really start to fine tune. I mean, I might have a good enough key here that I can go without any. You can really start to fine tune your key with a matte. It's much easier to see in this black and white format. Uh, the other thing that we can do with advanced mask to make your key even better, I've added a feather mask option. So you'd want to add another advanced mask filter right after your chroma key filter. And you'll go down and you'll, your alpha mask will be a feather mask. And now a feather mask is going to blur the edges of the mask. So if I crank it way up here, I look like a ghost or something. But if I set my feather to like two or three pixels, it's just gonna add that little bit of extra smoothing to the edges of the subject. And that adds just a little bit more realism to your chroma key. For those of you who made it this far, congratulations. I hope I've provided you with some new knowledge that'll help make your green screen look incredible.
by using reasonable lighting, a flat green screen, and understanding the chroma key settings in OBS, you have one of the fundamental building blocks to create amazing real-time special effects for your stream. If you found this useful, please hit the subscribe button, as I'll be adding plenty more tutorials in the future, including how to drop a TV on your head. Also, please stop by my live stream where we build these effects, as well as the software that's used to drive them. And I'll see you in the next one.